I guess the interest started from not not specifically glass, but art. The interest started in art at school. It was uh, it was the only thing I was really good at at school. Um, the only thing I I managed to get a grade above C in um, <laughs> on the subject. And it was I, I think at school even at school it was a way of just. Um, expressing myself and I did want to you know one of the things I wanted to do was go and do um, a, a foundation year at art school but uh, I wasn't encouraged to do that and I can understand why my mum she was a single parent my dad had died when we were very little and it was very important for her to see her daughters go into a profession where you would earn a good living and so I was encouraged to go into teaching and maybe do art as my main subject you know um, so that was where I was kind of pushed but all through that um, that art was always there and then once I started teaching I got my first teaching job in London I was always going off in the evenings to night classes, you know, I was doing a bit of life drawing, doing a bit of pottery, used to volunteer doing some screen printing um, in a local uh, theatre, you know, doing posters, working with this guy. And it was just being around doing art um, all the time. And then, and then I did a night class in stained glass and really loved that and kind of got hooked into that and set up in a kind of back room in the house doing doing just stained glass as a hobby, you know, putting panels together for myself and for friends. And, and that's, that's how it started. The process starts, I guess, in a number of ways. Because sometimes I'll look at, at, at other people's art and kind of get ideas. And it doesn't necessarily have to be glass art. It could be paintings or or prints or something and get and, and it's like when you look at something it's like oh yeah that would look great in glass or you could interpret that in a different way in glass so it's looking at other people's work it it's looking at nature a lot of the time um a lot of my work when you look around is is very kind of sea based you know I, i've always lived near the sea um and I don't know if that's got something to do with that, but a lot, a lot of the things are are to do with the ocean, the sea, the the um, you know animals that live in the sea. Um, so there's that as well. But then also, you know, the third way I guess is when people come to me wanting commission work, and that's quite a nice thing as well. It's like people bring you ideas of what they want and. And, and to kind of then interpret their ideas pushes you in a completely different direction that you might never have thought of. So then that gets you working along a path that you might not necessarily have kind of chosen, you know. Um, so yeah, lots lots of different, it's, it's, it's artists' own work, it's um, nature itself, and then it's, it's like the people that come for commissions, you know, pushing you in different ways. I do try, and it's like giving myself um, time out to go and learn new processes. Because um, glass at the minute seems to be expanding in lots of different directions and new techniques and things are being developed all the time. Um, and I really enjoy, you know, booking myself onto a workshop uh, there's a lot happens down in Bristol. Um, there's organisa organisations down there that get in these kind of guys and run master classes and things like that. So um, I look out. I look out for for things that you know I might want to kind of put myself on. And it's you know for my own personal development. I don't want to kind of stand still. I want to kind of keep expanding my skills. Um, and that's one way of doing it. Um, another way of doing it, I was actually thinking, was to, to kind of maybe get other glass artists together, you know, and, and kind of do more learning off each other, because 
when you go on a master class it, it's a lot of money you know so uh yeah maybe maybe doing kind of peer to peer stuff would be another way of doing things the people at the minute whose work um i'm really interested in um there's a woman called Shana Lieb and she does kind of fantastic sculptures with fused glass um, and all like very organic and again a lot of kind of sea-based stuff um, you know with uh, that look like kind of seaweeds and things like that she gets a lot of movement in in her work and then there's also another woman um, called Pinky McClure Scottish based uh, glass artist and she's stained glass and the work that she does, I've, I've not seen anything like it, you know. Um, yeah, she just she just goes on a completely different kind of tangent with, with stained glass. And, it, and it's amazing. And it's uh, what I really admire about her is it's, it's her voice in the stained glass, you know. Yeah, it's not just this kind of pretty window that's that's gone into a door. It's 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 a real kind of um, it's really her in in the glass, you know, and what she has to say. The workshops came about. The glass workshops came about because it's an easy thing for me to kind of fall into from being a teacher. I've taught for twenty years in schools, to then teach glass. You know, it, it wasn't a hard thing for me to kind of start doing. And it was a, a, a way of earning money from it. Now, when I first started doing the glass work, I remember getting some kind of pieces of stained glass together and trying to sell them. And it's like the hardest bloody thing to do, you know, is to, to try and sell pieces of your work. So so then looking at it from a different point of view, you know, I thought, right, well, I've got to do something else. This isn't bringing me in enough money to live on, trying to sell the stuff. So workshops that just kind of fell into, really. And um, it's, you know, I love teaching. I love passing on my skills. And, and the skills, you know, stained glass, it's a heritage skill. So... It's, it's good to kind of pass it on to, to the next generation. But it's also, I like the whole idea, you know, the studio here, eventually I've got a big enough studio now where I can have my workspace and I've got a specific designated workshop space. And it's important, that is so important in terms of kind of community for people to be able to come in and either take part in one of my workshops or they can come in once they've got the skills and just use the tools, use the facilities, buy the glass off me if they want it and, and do their own thing. And it's creating, creating a, a safe space where people can come in and just kind of reconnect with their creative spirit. It's that thing about just playing with colour and light, with the glass, you know, and, and we lose that, I think, as adults, because the number of people that come in on workshops and things, and they'll say, oh, well, I'm not arty, or I can't draw, and I'm not creative, but you just give them the materials, and if they can just let go of that and just play, you know, they're like, most of the time, they're really pleased with what they produce, you know, and they come back, they come back for more. And it's nice, it's that, that space is, creating that kind of space is really lovely. The first commission I did was scary. But yeah, I did it because I needed the money. Money pushes you, which is good. It pushes you to do things you don't always want to do. And it's that whole thing of kind of, you know, when you're being asked to commission something, what customer has in their head and what you think you know you've interpreted could go completely wrong but then I've learned kind of a you know to to involve the people the customers as much as possible um 
And that first commission, yeah, it, it taught me a lot about kind of communicating with people, um, always discussing each stage of the process, being open as well to people kind of coming down to the studio and they can look up the piece I'm doing, you know, at different stages. They can see it, see what's happening. So, you know, it's involving them as much as possible. But I still, <laughs> when I've done a piece, all I want to do is go to the house, put it on the doorstep and then run away. Because <laughs> it's, you know, when people kind of get the piece and open it up, you're like, shit, shit. And you're looking at the expression on their face because you want to, you know, what you want to see is, oh, that's great, Helen, you know. And most of the time that does happen, but uh, yeah, it's, it's a moment, yeah. My ambitions within my practice, my glass business, I suppose, uh would be to carry on doing what I'm doing because I love what I do. But to be able to spend more time just working on what I want to work on and, and finding my voice through the glass. Because I don't feel I've, I've, I've achieved that yet. Um, and, and, you know, sometimes I think I've got a lot to say and I want to say it through my art. I want to say it through my glass and I'm not doing that. And I haven't quite figured out how to do that. And maybe it's quite scary as well because you think, I think, oh, if I, if I put my real voice into it, people will think it's crap and I don't want to buy it anymore. You know, so, so there's that. And I just... You know, I, I want to just carry on doing what I'm doing until I'm physically unable to, till they put me in the box. Glass box. The glass box. <laughs> yeah. I've decided I really love gatherings. <laughs> I used to hate going to parties and things when I was little, you know, younger, younger. But I've decided now, no, I quite like this. And it's like, you know, we had an open weekend, just gone. And it's like putting on a, an event. I'm quite getting into this um, and, and having a gathering. And so it was so lovely. It's, it's, it's kind of bringing lots of different people together. So you've got, we had guest artists coming in. We had, um, you know, local community coming in. We had people from further afield coming in. Um, we've got um, other artists within this complex that have just come out of college and they've got their own little studio so they're drawing in another different group of people and it's doing that and it's bringing people together and, and that's what's creating the buzz about it because there is, there is a bit of a buzz about it and I think that's just going to keep going and going, you know. So it's that, yeah, gatherings. 